Holland's history goes back at least a thousand years, but as we've seen in recent years, the country is certainly not stuck in the past. Another recent indication that Polish culture marches on has been the construction of the nation's first cable television system in a joint venture between Polish National Television and an American firm. The first to sign up for the new service was none other than Lech Walesa. During medieval times, the city of Turan, here on the Vistula River, was a powerful trading center. In later years, as trade routes shifted to the larger seaports, Turan gradually lost its influence. Today, even though the town's stature in the outside world has diminished, its old world magic remains strong. The Gothic Town Hall and its red brick tower stand high above their surroundings, living images of the 14th century. Turan is known primarily for being the birthplace of the great astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. He was born in 1473 in this house, which now serves as a museum. It was Copernicus who first proposed the revolutionary theory that the Earth revolved around the Sun and that the apparent rising and setting of the stars was a result of the Earth spinning on its own axis. Copernicus is considered the father of modern astronomy. The University of Turan has been named in honor of its most famous sun. Turan somehow managed to escape the destruction inflicted on most of Poland during World War II. These 14th century town walls probably had no part in defending it, but the town somehow does seem blessed. It's almost as if time, marching onward, has decided to pass her by and that Turan is the better for it. Lots of Polish families like to spend their holidays by making a getaway to the unspoiled wilderness of the lake country. Thousands of pristine lakes cover Poland's northeast corner. They were carved and filled eons ago by a retreating glacier. They range in size from tiny little pools to Lake Szniarby, the largest lake in Poland. Its 50 square mile surface and constant breezes make it a sailor's paradise. In Poland's lake country, this is a way of life, a day on the water with the wind at your back, the stillness broken only by the flapping of the sails. Another popular vacation spot is the Baltic coast. Sandy beaches, mild temperatures, and fashionable resorts have been drawing crowds here for over a century. There are plenty of campsites nearby, and in some places the pine forests come all the way down to the shore. As at any resort, swimming, boating, and sunning are the leading priorities. Small ships run up and down the coast, stopping at various points of interest. Most of the folks around here live in one of the three sister cities of Gdansk, Gdynia, and Sopot. Gdansk, formerly known by its German name of Danzig, is one of Poland's oldest cities. It has had a turbulent history, having been ruled in turn by the Germans, Prussians, and Poles.
One of the great ports on the Baltic, Gdansk provides Poland maritime access to the rest of Europe. The city enjoyed its greatest prosperity between 1454 and 1793. Evidence of its role as a major European port during the Renaissance can be seen on every street, from the marketplaces, to the churches, to the rows of burgher houses. To keep the Renaissance spirit alive, the city hosts a Dominican fair every year. For two weeks in August, artists from all over Poland come here to display their work. But then artists and craftsmen have always done well in Gdansk. Beginning in the Middle Ages and on through the Renaissance, this elaborate artist mansion was the meeting place for the Artisans Guild. Right in front of the mansion is the most famous fountain in all of Poland, the Neptune Fountain. Cast in 1615, the handsome bronze sea god stands as a symbol of Gdansk and its spiritual connection with Neptune's kingdom. But while polite tribute is paid to a pagan god like Neptune, genuine devotion is given to the Catholic Church, embodied by St. Mary's Church, the largest Gothic church in the Baltic region. It can hold 25,000 worshippers. The church tower offers a panoramic view of the entire city. In 1980, these three steel crosses were erected outside the Lenin shipyard, the birthplace of the celebrated Solidarity Movement. Upon them, the struggle of the Polish worker has been commemorated in bronze. Just around the corner from Gdansk is Sopot, which was created as a spa in the 1600s and reached its heyday in the 19th century. The villas and grand hotels of that era are still welcoming vacationers today. One of the best ways to pass a few lazy hours here is to stroll down the pier. It's six football fields long and a great spot to take in some sun or just watch the ships roll in. From the sandy Baltic shore, to the rugged Carpathian peaks, across the fertile countryside, and along its winding blue rivers. Throughout its thousand-year history, Poland has fought invaders and built lasting monuments. She's given us a scientist who changed the way we look at the universe, heroes who have changed the course of history, and the music of Chopin, stirring the heart and comforting the soul. A respect for the past and a faith in the future. Poland, where heritage is at home.
It's interesting to note that 46 years of communist rule has seemingly made time stand still in Poland. That can add to its appeal. It has also left the country without hotels, restaurants, and other necessities of tourism. As more and more visitors head for the Eastern Bloc countries, the region's capital cities are desperately short of hotel space. For those who do find a room at the inn, though, Poland offers the reward of old world charm. We'll be back in a moment. scientific research at its most dangerous. To learn more about sharks, an up-close look is vital. But would you volunteer for the job? Wild Things takes the plunge next. Then at midnight Eastern, Beyond 2000.